Have you found that no matter what you do, you just can't sound like a pro on the violin? Do you find that you're just unable to play with a mature sound and you don't know what to fix? Well, that's what we're going to address in this video. Hi, I'm violinist Heather Kay, helping violinists all over the world improve their technical skill sets for more melodic playing. The first step is your foundation. Think about it. Do you see professional violinists play with a droopy violin, a horrible bow hold, and a horrible left hand? No! <laughs> the reason why is because we want to be set up ergonomically. Professional violinists play how many hours upon a day in rehearsals and concerts and practicing for a lifetime. I've spent a lifetime on the violin. If I played the violin not ergonomically correct, I would be in a world of pain right now. So inspect your foundation. Take the time to learn correctly. Set your foundation in place and your violin journey is going to be a lot easier. So you may ask, okay, so what is the foundation? Foundation is a good violin hold, a good bow hold, making sure that you're able to hold the violin without any tension. Okay, we want to play as relaxed as possible. So investigate your foundation. Intonation. Intonation is playing in tune. Now, we're not robots, we're not machines, and even the best violinists do play an occasional note out of tune. However, you want to make sure that you strive every single second to play in tune. How do you fix your intonation? With scales, you wanna play scales. You wanna make sure that you practice your scales every day. listen to every single pitch. So you want to play them slowly and if you hear anything out of tune, start from the note before and fix the note that was out of tune from the note before. The next is your left hand. So you want to have a relaxed left hand. If your left hand is tense, you're not going to be able to move around the instrument very easily. You're not going to be able to play quickly and you're also not going to be able to shift easily and effortlessly. And then vibrato. It's imperative to have vibrato and a healthy vibrato to sound like a professional violinist. I'll play something here for you without vibrato so you can hear what it sounds like. And now I'm going to add in vibrato. Huge difference, right? I also uh, sparkled in a little bit of bow speed which we're gonna get into. If your vibrato isn't healthy, it's going to really affect your sound so it doesn't sound mature. So we also have different vibrato. We can have an arm vibrato, we can have a hand vibrato, um, we can have narrow vibrato, we can have wide vibrato, but no matter what vibrato you're using, you wanna make sure that it is healthy. What do I mean by healthy? That it's not tense and that it's not what I call a tension vibrato. When I played for you, I demonstrated a little bit of bow speed. So you want to vary up your speed. If you're playing just... We can take that and add in some bow speed. And it already sounds better. So instead of just you know staying within this part of the bow, you want to explore all parts of the bow and really investigate bow speed. And then if you know your positions, you can change that same what I just played for you and put it in a different position. And add vibrato and it sounds completely different than what we had at the beginning. Okay, so bow speed really influences your tone. How to practice bow speed? Scales! You can take any scale and just work up playing frog to tip with varying speeds of bow. Okay, so you take any scale and just play really fast bows. You can explore it by playing slow to fast. You know, so there's different ways you can explore how to improve your bow speed. Then the next is bow distribution. What is bow distribution? Bow distribution is when you think about where exactly you're going to be, what part of the bow, and what part of your piece. So say you have a musical phrase, you want to know exactly where you're going to be at all times in the bow. Okay, so perhaps you want to be at the frog. But then you want to always know where you're going to be in the bow, OK? 
okay? Are you gonna be at the frog? Are you gonna be at the tip? Are you gonna be in the middle? Where are you gonna travel? Where are you gonna use more speed in order to get to where you need to be? So those are things you wanna think about. Then, you know, when you talk to somebody, you talk in phrases, you talk in sentences, you may be asking a question, you may be declaring something. You know, the same with music, you wanna know where your musical phrases are. If we play music like a professor at a university that is in one of the most boring classes and that just talks like this at all times and you find that the students are falling asleep. It's the same with music. If we played like a boring professor, you know, actually it could be kind of interesting, but we could take that same uh, idea and make it more interesting. Okay, so <laughs> you can make it so interesting and have it sound more professional if you add those dramatic dynamics. That way your audience will be enthralled, encapsulated, and won't be able to take their attention away from you because you're grabbing it with the way you are playing. Next is finesse in your bow strokes. Think about how you end your phrases. You know, allow yourself that decrescendo at the ends of the phrases if it does call for a decrescendo. So you have this nice finesse and not that you just end with stopping the brakes. Okay, we don't want to just stop the brakes. Unless it's called for in the music and it's that character, but in general you want to end with really nice finesse on your phrases. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. You want to play with confidence. You play it with fear. It's going to come across and your audience is going to know you're playing with fear and they're going to think, mm, yeah, this person's a little nervous. Okay, you want to play with confidence. Stand with confidence. Hold your violin with confidence. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. <laughs> with confidence. Make sure that you enjoy yourself and release any blockages that's stopping you from feeling free and expressing yourself on the violin. Take the time to play for others because playing for others you're going to learn how you are in those specific situations. Think about it. Professional violinists play for others all the time, right? So if you want to play like a professional violinist, don't keep practicing in your practice room. Get out there and share your talents, your gifts, and let other people feel the happiness and love that you have and, and inspire them to feel better. And keep educating yourself. The violin is a lifetime process. Study with a teacher, work with online programs, get even more tips on how you can sound like a pro with my Gorgeous Tone Academy. 12 weeks of total studies, training videos, live workshops, and more. I'll see you there.